Hi, I'm Dan Augusto with GearWire.com, and today we're going to take a look at the Blue Cat Frequency Analyst. It's a new plugin from uh, Blue Cat. I believe it just came out this week. So um, to do this, we're going to sort of do a little mastering EQ on a track I did a while back uh, for a GearWire bumper, and um, let's just give it a listen. It's already pretty well compressed, so we're not going to do anything but some EQ. All right. So let's take a look at this plug. Um, pretty big GUI. Um, and right now, this is uh, the spectrum view. There's a few different views on here. Um, one of the cool things about this visually is that um, there's this thing called window opacity. Right now it's at 100%. And you can turn that down. And that actually makes it you know, see through. We can actually see what's going on behind the plugin. It's kind of a neat, uh, neat feature, uh, but the one thing about it is once you do that, it's kind of hard to find the slider again to turn it back up. So I'm pretty much, when I use this, going to leave it up all the way. So I'm going to play back the track and we'll see uh, what happens as far as uh, what, what this uh, plugin shows us. All right, so a standard uh, spectrum view. The x-axis is uh, measured in hertz, or the frequencies and uh, y-axis up and down, um, that's our decibels. So as you can see, this is already a pretty loud track. So um, what we might want to do is make it easier to so sort of see the curves, is to bring down the actual response curve a little bit. And we can do that in our adjust uh, mode over here. So basically, I, if I wanted to, I can turn it up. It was too quiet. So you can see, that brings the curve almost off the charts. But we can bring it down too. So it's more in the center. There we go. And I'm going to reset the peak. So as you can see, it's holding, it's holding the peaks for us in this view. And of course, if we want to reset it, we just hit this button over here. We can reset the average as well. I don't think we're showing that right now. Um, we can also freeze everything and just sort of take a snapshot of what we're looking at. Um, some of the other things we can do here uh, we've already taken a look at the adjust mode, so let's take a look at that again. There is a um, there is a filter on here, and it's basically a, uh, a high shelving filter, I believe, um, or it could be a, a I don't know a gang uh, low pass or high pass filter. Not exactly sure, but if we want to sort of even it out a lot, because a lot of times with program material, we're seeing something that with a curve that starts out high and gets lower. We want to make it flatter just for the sake of, of uh, you know, making it look like that. We could turn up the slope a little bit. As we can see, it's more, uh, it has the frequencies on more of an even keel. We could also go crazy and just knock that off the charts right there. And we could also go down so that we're just monitoring the, um, visually monitoring the low frequencies. I'm going to set that to zero because I don't really have a use for that right now. Um, we also have an envelope control. One of the things on here is peak reset, and that'll just basically, after a certain amount of seconds, reset the peak. Right now, it, uh, it has 21 dB per second, which means every second the peaks are going to go down 21 dB. We can turn that down, and it'll hold a little longer, as you can see, especially up here. Um, also, we're able to uh, change the envelope of of um, our response curve, and what that can help us with, right now it's very very quick and basically what we're getting is the response of a peak meter and now to really understand this you need to understand the difference between a peak meter and a VU meter which are two main types of, of meters. Peak meters are generally what you're going to see in, in the digital domain. Um, they're very fast and they, they'll, they'll go up all the way right away with the sound but the problem with that is that our ears don't really hear that way. We hear of more, in a, more of an average um, amount of time so uh, view meters, which which you see on a lot of analog consoles, they're actually the needle that'll like pop up, uh, or a lot of home stereo, older home stereo units. Um, so what we can do is actually independently change the attack and release time to make it more like a view meter. So if we turn up the attack, what we're going to see is actually it's going to definitely stop jumping as much. We'll turn up the attack, It'll sort of slow down. So that's giving us more of an average of what we're hearing. You could do the same with the release and it'll actually start going moving real slow, very sluggish, which can actually 
be very helpful when trying to find like just general areas. You can see that we have a lot of energy right here, sort of peaking around 100 hertz, and we can see that better than if we have everything turned down. You know, now it, you can still see that using the hold peak, um, but if we would turn that, down, we wouldn't, wouldn't be able to really see that much at all. But I'm gonna leave it down all the way, or actually maybe just turn the attack up a little bit, release up a little bit, about there, probably sort of in the middle. There's also a transform mode here, and what that basically does is we uh, there's a speed control, we turn that up and we can see changes quicker, basically. And if we turn down the attack more and the release more, we'll be able to see, it, see that a lot better. And this is pretty, very confusing, so we may not want it to go that fast. So we can turn it down a bit, and it sort of helps a little bit. But of course, the envelope we want to have up a little bit to sort of see more of how our ears would hear what's going on. I'm gonna turn the speed up back to 100%. Sometimes you can't get the knobs to go right, sometimes, and you can just double click these, type in a numerical value, 100, it'll go straight to zero, or straight to 100. Um, precision, that's a very important one actually. Um, if you're looking into zero in on certain frequencies, um, see if there's any, any problem, you want to turn that precision up. And what that'll do is we see a lot more peaks, as you can see. So this is actually taking up a lot more uh, CPU power and we could also turn it all the way down and now we get a very very smooth curve that sort of gives us a, a really good idea of how our our sound is overall but for this application what we're doing here today I'm gonna leave it up around six alright one other mode on here is a threshold mode and um, there's absolute you could either control it with the slider or with or actually with the knob or with this slider on the side and what this does is it sort of sets a level over which the um, the plugin will stop seeing um, certain frequencies if they're below a certain level so this lets you zero in on frequencies and if we turn up the precision actually we might actually get a little bit more you know, able ability to see this so right now we're just seeing frequencies that are popping over that level. We can also adjust this relative, meaning um, it'll only show us things that are relatively loud uh, compared to other frequencies surrounding it. So what this will do is we'll actually get more of a, a, a wider range because um, in areas that have less energy, like a, a frequency range say between you know, 4, 400 and 500, we're seeing these peaks here because overall the energy in this range is less than the energy in this range, so we're seeing more peaks over here. I'm going to turn that all the way down so we get to see everything and turn the precision back down just a little bit. There's also a different cursor for um, that you can use on here. Right now we just have the hand cursor. If we go to this, this sort of X cursor, and we go over the graph. Up at the top here, we can see exactly the position, mouse position over here. So let's say, you know, we, we see this peak over here, and we, we want to find uh, what frequency that is exactly. 503. And uh, right now it's at 46 decibels. Of course, remember, we're using the offset for uh, negative 20 dB so that the curve is closer to the center. So we, we actually have to add 20 to that so that actually uh, would be uh, t 26, negative 26 dB. All right, so that's the, the spectrogram at a glance. There's all sorts of things where um, you can make like your left channel a red line. It might be kind of hard to see, but you can see a peak over here for the left channel that's red. It might be hard to see on the video though. We can also go into our spectrogram view. And for this view, I'm actually gonna turn the offset back up. I really like this view, it's sort of uh, what you would see on like a Doppler radar, and it shows you basically where the most energy is based on color, black being pretty much zero, and as we get warmer and warmer, we see there's more energy around this area. Just like we can see on the, on the spectrum 
uh, view. Now, what this means, you know, th this is sort of in the, the 100 hertz range between, let's see, since we got our, our handy uh, cursor here, between 80 hertz and about 150 hertz. We're seeing a lot of energy, maybe a little too much. So, in this view, I'm going to show you um, kind of how you can even out your frequency response. I'm going to open an equalizer. This is our Sonitis equalizer. And reset. There we go. So what I've done is turned on uh, a sort of a peak filter, or a peak uh, band EQ, and it's uh, attenuating 5.1 um, decibels at 137 hertz. Uh, with a uh, Q factor of 1.2. And as you can see, there's a lot less red up here. Um, we see, we're seeing more of an even curve. And if we look at our spectrum view, we'll see the same thing. Very even curve up here. So in this view, I'm gonna, I'm gonna toggle that, that, that uh, the uh, notch filter off and on. So that's off, and we can see again that red starting to show up. Turn it back off, or, I'm sorry, turn it back on, and there we go, we have a lot less energy there. Another cool thing to do in this view is raise the threshold, this is the absolute threshold. So we're only going to see areas that pop up, you know, pop up above a certain decibel value when we're like this. So again, once again, we're seeing most of our energy over uh, negative 30 or so is is in this area, this this area of the frequency band. But what we're also seeing is a lot of energy down below like 40 hertz. And you know, we, we the human ear can only hear down to 20 hertz, and 40 hertz is about twice that. But it's still very very low, extremely low. We can barely hear it. It takes a lot of power to amplify uh, anything that low. And I mean anything below 300 hertz can be very, very uh, tough on an amplifier and a speaker. So uh, down, down here it's even worse. And if we think about where this particular piece is going to be played, it's a web-based media, so it's going to be played on small speakers, and those frequencies aren't even going to be recreated. So what we want to do is take out those frequencies. So what I'm going to do is turn on a high-pass filter, and we're going to see immediately some differences here. We're seeing more of that red, though, because this is actually slightly resonant so that it would um, sort of uh, be more of a steep slope. So what I'm going to do is turn down the resonance of that filter. So now we actually can turn that down a little bit. And we can see, uh, once again, less red, but we're not getting much at all below 50 hertz or so. Kick drum, normally you want it to peak around 80. Anything below that, you really don't, don't need in the recording unless you're, you're really going to be playing it through hi-fi speakers and you want people to feel it. Because you're not going to hear that anyway. So, as we can see, we still... It, it's pretty smooth, but we're still getting a little bit of stuff down there, a little bit of junk that we don't really want. So I'm going to turn on one more uh, belly cue. And as you can see, the curve just makes it a lot more steep. Turn that, a little, that down a little bit. Maybe even lower our filter just a little bit. So now we see just very clean. This is all we're getting. We're not getting much at all below there. And if we actually turn this back on, we can see this is all green now. And this is sort of a frequency response that we can deal with. We're getting a little bit of red, but that's just fine. One other thing that we should check out in the spectrum view is this little guy right here. This this line, or this band, um, has this little vertical line that's kind of dancing around back and forth. And what's that, what that is doing is showing you where in the stereo spectrum between left and right has the most energy. So it's sort of showing you where uh, the center of your stereo image is. Now this is based on a lot of different factors. It may not work all that well for all programming material, but it is a handy little thing to have. As long as you're not dancing all over the place, uh, you should be pretty okay. But of course, maybe you, you do want that, that the center image to move a lot. There's also a freeze option, so you can just take a snapshot of what you're looking at. That works for the spectrogram as well. So you can see it's not moving anymore. 
press it again and it starts moving again. So I'm going to stop playback and we're going to take a look at the output view. This is the last one. As we can see, there's three graphs on here. This is similar to the spectrum view, but it also has that time aspect to it. Um, basically, this shows us what's happening on the left and the right, and then the combined summed uh, center one. And it ha also has its own controls. Each, each one of these have uh, its, its, its own controls. Um, and it also is uh, reliant on these controls down here. I'm going to turn playback on again, and we're just going to see what happens here. So as we can see, they're, as the left and right are fairly similar. I'm not seeing too many incredible differences. Of course, there is a hard pan guitar left and a hard pan guitar right, but they're pretty much playing the same thing. Um, you know, right now this pretty much just uh, let's see. Right now this is pretty much uh, just showing us the balance between left and right. And there are a lot of different things that you can do on this view. We're not going to be able to get to all of them, unfortunately, because we have limited time. But uh, that is the Blue Cat Frequency Analyst Pro VST at a glance. So thanks for checking it out here at GearWire.com.